The prophet you don't recognize cannot do this. When you're telling me your problem, I'm not seeing you. I am the big God who is bigger than that problem. Help me look at somebody by your right hand side. Look into his or her eyes. Say to him, anytime there's a delay in miracles, God sent a prophet. Grace is found me just as I am. Empty hand above Show me your faith and I'll show you your miracle. On Tuesday coming, that boy that quarreled with you is setting you up again. And their plan is to stab you with butter on your head. When that happens on Tuesday, don't respond. The Bible says, if the foundation be shaken, what will the righteous do? I came to somebody this afternoon with a message. A message of hope. A message of faith. Just to let you know that problems may last, but they are not everlasting. Be now exalted, Jesus. in the house lift your voices look it after me come on what a mighty god we say oh, are we love of heaven and earth the creator come on say there are no words no words that i can say to glorify the to say yeah what am I say yeah 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 you're mighty you're mighty, you're mighty. You're mighty. I will say Yeah, 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 yeah
sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said behold if the lord would make windows in heaven might this thing be and he said behold thou shalt see it with thy eyes but shall not eat thereof Verse 18, everybody to go. And it came to pass, as the man of God has spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall be tomorrow, about this time, in the gate of Samaria. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to teach this morning on the topic from scarcity to overflow. Amen. Amen. Look at the neighbor say, you can move from scarcity to overflow. I didn't say mama, I said talk to your neighbor. Come on, people. Make some eye contact. Look into the eyes of that fellow. Come on, people. Say, look at me, I'm a prophet of God. Say, look at me, I'm a prophet of God. I just want to prophesy into your life. You will move from scarcity to overflow shout a thunderous amen to that 
Now, there are four principles that make for a life of overflow. Number one is the prophet and his declaration. Number two, the prophet and his anointing. Number three, the believer's faith level. And number four, the believer's giving life. Four principles that could lead you to a life of overflow. Number one, the prophet and his declaration. Number two, the prophet and his anointing. Number three, the believer and his faith level. And number four, the believer and his giving life. These are the principles that can take anybody from scarcity to overflow. And we are going to be handling this because of our time. We are going to run to be able to catch up with all that the Lord wants us to get this morning. Now, let's look at the prophet and his declaration. And that is centered on the scriptures that we read this morning. Now, if you read the entire scriptures, something will come clear to you. And that is how God carries out the words of his servant in the life of the people of God. Now, verse 3, something happened there. I am looking at a phrase there. He said, there was four leprous men. Now, the word of God has gone forth that there was scarcity in the city of Samaria, but the word of the prophet said, in this place where you have scarcity, by this same time tomorrow, there will not be scarcity again, but there's going to be an overflow of food and blessings. That was the declaration of the prophet of God. Now, the Bible said that God raised four prophets. Now, I want you to understand this, that it is the duty of the prophet to make declaration, but it is the duty of God to carry out the words of his servants. Say amen. amen. Now, the prophet's work is just to make declarations over your life, and that's his duty. And it is the duty of God to carry out what the prophet has said in your life. So if you don't have a prophet speaking over your life, you are finished. So many people don't understand that there is power in the words of the prophets. God uses prophets to advance our life and our destinies. That's why people are moving with terrific speed in their destinies. Because they have a prophet over their lives that they listen to. They have a prophet over their lives that they obey. Jesus came to my office just before I traveled and told me how he had gone to different hospitals and the doctors had said that what was happening to his leg does not have any cause, right? You're right, sir. He does not have any cause. And finally, he put his hand in his pocket and brought money. The money was supposed to have been given to the doctors. He gave it to his prophet and said, declare a word. I was praying on the other leg. He said, no. He lifted the other one and I saw the bandage, right? And I prayed over it. And that's the end of it. That's the end of the attack that doctors could not heal. Now, why would God heal him? Let me tell you why. Why God obeyed him like that. Yesterday, my driver and I, we were somewhere in Ikerebu, and I went to have a haircut, and I sent him to go to this supermarket where they buy bread. Our life. Every day supermarket, whatever the name is. Every day supermarket. And he saw him on the road and asked after me. My driver said, Daddy is having his haircut in the next shop. And Jebus Abba entered there. There were so many people there. He was screaming, my father, my father. He was screaming, that is my father. He was not ashamed. He no sent. He doesn't even know that anybody's. I mean, there were prominent people there who came to have their hair cut. He was screaming, my father, my father. Now listen to me. The Bible said something very clear. And that's the reason such a person can experience miracle. He said, believe the Lord your God. The only thing you have is establishment. But if you want to prosper, what's the Lord say? Believe the prophets. It is your faith in the prophet that determines the next rain you will flow in your life. He was not ashamed to scream. Biologically speaking, I'm not his daddy. The age difference is much. But for everyone have, that have ever received a thing from the prophet of God, would always see the prophet as his father. Because he sees that this is God speaking to me. Anybody hear what I'm saying now? Huh? This is very important. You need to get this right. The man of God declared, 
this affliction is over. And that was it. Yet that same day, a leader in our church came and said to me, Daddy, I've been bleeding. And I prayed for her. It is well with you. So when I called to know how she was feeling, she told me I'm still bleeding. Now, what is the difference between the two of them? That prayer didn't last off for three seconds. I just said, Kabakado Shitara Badaya. Come. That was all I said. But the other lady, I even prayed often. As I was praying, she was saying, Amen. So I still prayed. Uh, uh, of course, she's a deaconess. I still prayed. When I checked on her, she's still bleeding. But this prayer lasted three seconds. And that was the end. Now, what's the difference between what had happened to him and what has happened to her? Third level. I don't know whether anybody's going to say now. Now, the man of God declared and said, by this time tomorrow, there is going to be an overflow of food. Somebody doubted it. It is the duty of the man of God to say it. It is the duty of somebody to believe it. And it's the duty of God to carry it out. Somebody say, I hear. So God carries out the words of his servants. And fulfills the predictions of who? His messengers. Somebody say, I hear. Now, get this right. Number two, that's verse six. There's a phrase there. The Lord made the Syrians to hear a noise. And when they heard the noise, they arose and fled. Every word that the prophet had declared over your life, God will always design an occasion to bring it to pass. Is somebody here? I'm saying now. The Lord made the Syrians to hear a noise. There was no noise anywhere. The Lord stirred up a noise. I see a I see the Lord stirring a noise in the camp of your enemies. That amen is suffering from one shocker. Can you shout the loudest amen you can afford? And the Lord stirred up a noise in the camp of his enemies. They had a noise. There, there was no noise, but they had a noise. God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. God works in mysterious ways just to perform the wonders he wants to perform in your life as a believer. There was no noise, but God stirred up a noise. Listen, when prophets speak, what is not existing will come into existence. The words of prophets are seeds. And the anointing upon their life is the fertilizer. When they speak, the seed has been planted. And when the anointing flows, the seed must germinate. The thing is this. When it has to do with anointing, there is no timing. That's why if you read the Bible, it says, as the earth remained, seed time and harvest. It didn't say harvest time. Because there's no time there. The moment the word comes, what happens in 20 years can happen in 20 minutes. Am I talking to somebody here? The moment the anointing is released, what happens, what used to take 20 years can take two days. That is the show of God's anointing. Can I prophesy to somebody in this house? Whatever thing that have delayed your anointing, I release them now. Whatever thing that have delayed your miracle, I release those miracles now. I can't shoot them, I release your miracles. I can't shoot them and I release your miracles. I can't shoot them and release your miracles. Shout at me like you know it. Now, in verse 9 and 10, the Bible said something that the leprous men that caught the blessing said to themselves, We cannot relax here. We need to distribute this blessing. Can I say something to you? This blessing that God is talking about will never end until your own allocation is given. Did you notice that the step first men were sharing the blessing? But at the point, something said to them, don't share it alone. Go back and spread it. Because there was somebody in the house that believed God. If you eat alone, you will die alone. The Lord panicked them. Go and spread it. Can I speak to somebody here? The Lord will panic people in your life. The distribution will not end until it comes to your hands. Whatever they are distributing, it will never end until your Lord comes.
close your hand. Your blessing is coming to you. Your open door is coming to you. Your lifting is coming to you. Your healing is coming to you. Your promotion is coming to you. Your decoration is coming to you. Your finances are coming to you. Lift up your hand and shout hallelujah. It will never stop until it gets to me. Someone say it. Oh, come on, someone say it. Oh, come on, somebody say it. Shout it louder. Shout it louder. Scream it louder. It will never cease until it gets to me. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to now? That blessing will never stop until it gets to your hand. That blessing will never stop until it gets to your hand. That blessing will never stop until it gets to your hand. It will never cease until it gets to your trunk. Somebody shout hallelujah. The blessing did not cease until it got home. It will never cease in your life. It will get to you. Now watch this. Verse 20. The consequences of doubting prophetic declaration. The consequences of doubting prophetic declaration. Listen. It's not only that you will lose your blessing, but you can die for it. The Bible said that that man that died, doubted the prophets, what happened to him? People marched on his head. They use his hand for stop, stop. The consequences of doubting the prophetic declaration. When you doubt the prophetic declaration, you die. So, of course, where we are today is not where God has designed that we will be. But we are here today because we doubt the prophetic. It is only the prophetic that takes a man from where he is to where he needs to be. When God wants to move you to your new level, he sends a prophet to you. We read the scriptures, the book of Luke chapter number 4. The Bible said there was famine in the whole land. Only one widow was saved. And I asked, why was it only woman that was sent, saved? And the scriptures answered, because one prophet was sent to him. There were thousands of widows, but only one got saved. She got saved because a prophet was sent to her. When there was famine, if you read the scriptures, the believers will always send relief. Even in Nigeria, what is Naima doing? When there's famine, what do they do? They send relief materials. Last time it was our brethren in Uguta. Name her came. They sent them bundles of zinc, cement, clothings. Is that not correct? Anytime in Madikuri, see what is going on now. UN came in, brought relief materials to live. Anytime there is famine, the worldly system is to send relief. Clothings, food, medicine, money. But that is not the system of heaven. When there is famine, heaven sends prophets. Why? Because in the prophet lies F. He said, My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are different from your thoughts. The way you do things is not the way I do things. I work in diverse ways. If there is famine, don't ask for money, ask for a prophet. If there is confusion, don't ask for a lawyer, ask for a prophet. If there is death, don't ask for a doctor. Ask for a prophet. Because prophets are God's answers to human confusion. I'm telling you the truth. When the prophet comes, he will conclude the confusion. When the prophet arrives, he will do what? He will conclude the confusion. Very important. And God sent them a prophet who came and changed their lives changed their destinies, and brought relief to their lives. So you see that for every miracle, for every breakthrough, for every overflow, there must be the declaration of the word of the prophet. Somebody say, I hear. Now the second thing is the prophet and his anointing. The prophet and his anointing. In Psalm 23 verse 5, David said, Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runs over. 
Now, it is the anointing of the prophet that causes the overflow. Because you have put the oil on me, my accounts have no choice but to overflow. Because you have put the oil. So if you look at the scriptures, several things happen. The city of Moab were in trouble. They were cultivating, they were farming, but there was no harvest. The change came when they called prophet Elisha. And when Elisha entered the land, he said, give me a new crucible. They gave it to him. Give me salt. They gave it to me. He went where? At the source of the river and demonstrated anointing. He sprinkled it and said, from today, this land is healed. But the release of the anointing of the prophet, overflow came. Overflow came. The prophet and his anointing. Look at the widow. The Bible said that she had just a bottle of oil. And there was nothing she could do about her situation. And she cried to the man of God. What did man of God do? Man of God released anointing. Go and borrow vessels. The woman went and borrowed all the vessels. Uh -huh. What next? He said, start pouring. Sir, I don't understand. One bottle of oil is not equal to 50 jerry can. He said, by my anointing, start pouring. And the Bible said that that woman kept pouring until the last jerry can was filled before the oil stopped flowing. What brought that overflow? The anointing of the prophets. The woman had no anointing. It was the anointing of the prophets. The prophet walked into her life. That was the end of it. When the prophet walked into your life, chicken, huh? That's it. Now look at this Samaritan woman. The Bible said something. The, not the Samaritan woman, the Samaritan people. They were in bondage by Simon the sorcerer. He kept the whole city impoverished. But when Philip came, the Bible said, by the anointing of prophet Philip, he did what? He liberated the city of Samaria. And every businessman in that city started prospering. The anointing. It was the anointing of Philip that brought the overflow in their lives. I'll give you another instance. The Philippian church. It was the anointing of St. Paul that caused the Philippian church to prosper. I mean the Messalonian church to prosper. He said to them, because you have done this, my God shall supply your needs. The prophet and his anointing. Now let's quickly look at the third thing we are running, John Benson. The, prophet, the believer and his faith. We are looking at the principles that brings overflowing blessings. We have looked at the prophet and his declaration. We have looked at the prophet and his anointing. Now we're looking at the believer and his what? And his faith. He said to them, according to your faith, be it unto you. I'll, give you, I'll read them out. Number one, his name is Naaman. He said to Naaman, go to that river. Dip yourself seven times. And Naaman obeyed. He had faith. Walked into the river and did what? Did himself sometimes. What happened to his body? Leprous man. The believer and his faith. That was it. Look at what happened in Canaan of Galilee. They are all, they have wine finished. What did he say to them? He instructed them. Fill this pot with water. And they filled the pot with water. He said to them again, pull the water and go and serve. Faith. Carried the water and went to serve. What happened to the water? It turned wine. Faith. Faith. Faith of a believer. We are up in Mendat House service. And one of my pastors in the Mendat House, they've been believing God for fruit of the womb for nine years. After teaching in Mendat House in November, first week of December, they came to see me. The wife said to me, I want to take permission. I said, What's the permission? Can I sit on your chair? I said, go ahead. She came and sat on my chair and left. February, Menda's house, they were in church. I noticed the way she was going out and coming in. After service, they came to see me with at least nine or 12 months pregnant envelope. I said, what is this for? 
So that my wife is pregnant. This is two months now. What happened? You know that day we told you that we want to sit on your chair. My wife went and sat on your chair for four hours. And when she got there, we were told that her two fallopian tubes were blocked. When she caught up from here, we went straight. And they took her samples and asked her to come again. And the following day, they couldn't find anything. They couldn't find anything. They couldn't find anything. The believer and his faith. And as I'm talking to you, they're expecting. Sat on my chair. I didn't ask her to go and sit on my chair. Her faith led her to go and sit on my chair. I did not ask Dick now, but to give me the money. His faith brought him to my office. Daddy, eh, eh, see my leg. And he put the doctor's money in my hands. He hear me. It's your faith. Look at the scriptures. Every single one of them. I have other instances here. Which one I, do I mention now? Which one do I leave? So many of them. Things that happen in the scriptures. Just because a believer decided to exercise his faith. And they received overflowing blessings. Because of time, I will leave it there. Let me jump to the last one. The believer and his giving life. Four principles that causes overflowing blessings. One, the prophet and his declaration. Two, the prophet and his anointing. Three, the believer and his level of faith. And number four, the believer and what? Talk to me. The believer and what? He's giving life. Now, Peter and his friends were fishing. And they toiled all through the night. They didn't get anything. When they met Jesus... Jesus begged them for what? For what? For boats. Let me tell you something. There are some things that, when I see them in the scripture, it looks funny. We read them like stories. But when it is applied to our lives, it's very difficult. One man just calls his name. His name is, uh, hello, my name is Jesus Christ. Um, I am one of the rabbis preaching in that uh, tabernacle. Give me your boat. We read it as if it's very simple. And he gave him the boat. That's it all. That's the way this thing flows. God is selecting. When he comes, he selects. He said there were thousands of widows in the whole place, but he selected. If you read the Bible, that is the truth. There will always be many called, but few. He just said, give me your boat. The Bible said what? They did what? They gave him the boat. The same place they toyed and they did not get anything. That same place was the place they had overflowing catch of fish. Why didn't they get it initially? They did not get it initially because... There was no demand placed on them. I was telling them in the morning, I said, I was not privileged to read Acts subjects. I read science is all true. But the little economics I know says, wherever there is a demand, the next thing is what? Supply. Anytime there is a demand, whether jokingly or cornerly or strictly or cornerly, soundly, anytime there is a demand, the law is very simple. What's the next? The higher the demand, the higher the supply. Jesus came and said, Give me the boat. The moment there was a demand, heaven created a supply. And all the fishes in the whole world were called to gather and have feasts. They all came because there was a demand. It is the demand that creates the supply. You don't get supply because of demand. It doesn't work. It is only demand that creates supply. Give me your boats. Give. Give me your boats. Jesus met a boy he had two fishes 
and five loaves of bread. So I said, give me your lunch. Moment he demanded it, what happened? The boy gave. What happened? What followed that? People, what, what followed that? Twelve baskets were what? Supplied. Since you can give, collect twelve baskets. Since I gave you only two fishes and five loaves, and you are able to release them, now collect what? Twelve baskets. If I give this boy twelve baskets, he will not be stingy with me. Jesus, whenever he wants to talk, he says, I'll stand at the door of your heart doing what? Everything about God is choice. I put before you life and death. Choose. Everything about God is choice. Who amongst you here wants to worship? Let him come decide. Everything is choice. If you want, you walk into it. 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 That is the way heaven behaves. That's all. The same thing, the same way. It has never changed. It has never changed. It will never change. If you are looking for overflow in your life, those four principles are things you need. Always make to hear the voice of the prophets. Listen, this thing about religion, stop that. Begin to reason well. Change your mentality. Tell yourself, I am not going to church. I am going to have an encounter with my prophets. Because any time you see a prophet, there must be an encounter. And once there is an encounter, there must be a change of life. Stop all this thing about church going. Stop all this rubbish. What are you going there to do? Any day you tell yourself, I am going to see my God for encounter, that day your life will change. Religion teaches you to come to church, but Christianity teaches you encounter with Christ. They all had their breakthroughs because they had encounter. Encounter that changed their lives. They had the voice of the prophet and heaven carried it out. They released their faith and their faith produced for them. What are you looking for? An overflowing life is designed for you. Say, I know the thoughts I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you what? A hope and a future. What is keeping you down is your giving life. Your giving life is so low. That's why your life is so low. Your giving life is too, too low. Every one of them encountered surge of divine supply. Because the moment there was a demand on them, boom, they responded. And God turned around their lives. Those who have ever done it in faith have yielded themselves to God. They have always received immediate results. The other issue has to do with your cloud getting filled up. And when it gets filled up, it will rain for you. Whether, whether you are prepared or not, it must rain. Let me tell your neighbor, whether you are prepared or not, it must rain on you. Four principles. As I am speaking now, I'm declaring life. I'm making declarations. Because you see this week, look at the number, say, say this week, you must see overflow in your life. I don't like the way you are talking. Open them and say, never, never. never, never. Hear my voice now. Voice. This week, surely as the Lord lives, you will see overflow in your life. Overflow in your bank account. Overflow in your life. In your bank account. In your academia. In your family. Those who believe it are saying, Amen. wants to change your life he must put a demand on you there are no two ways about it stop all this complaint one man came to Jesus and said Jesus bless me what did Jesus tell him he said gather everything you have go and sell it and sow seed the man got angry and walked away how many of you read in your bible wave your hand if you say he got angry and walked away Jesus looked at him looked at him and said Chai. this one has missed his blessing We are talking about opportunities to evangelize the world. One boy was here on Sunday, and I demanded that he should give me a ticket. Somebody by the side overheard it. 
and ran to me and said, I don't have that ticket. Can I give you 10% of the ticket? I'm a student. I looked at him. I said, bring it. He's been believing God for these four courses. Missing scripts. And one he failed totally. He brought it to my office. I was in a house standing up. Ugochuku, put my thing in the car quickly. He brought the 10% of that money. I said, go and pay it to my account. While on the way, I called him on phone. I said, Jesus just told me that you were looking for something. He said, yes, sir. It's my result. I said, it's found. He said, amen. I'm going to school now. By the time he arrived at school, according to him, the accost step was already there. The public graduated the door. He said, come, let's go and see him. He entered. The man was working on their result. And he just told the man, look at what I said. The man said, forget it. On the spot, the four results were worked, signed, submitted to exams and records. On the spot. This is something that would have taken him going to steal one lecturer and other to go and do that. No, 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 no. I am the HOD. I am in charge. He put every mark. As he said, the when he saw those things, one he had it see. The other one he had it see or something. He said, but the man puts A A in the whole four courses for me and signed. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? There is something you will do. Heaven will run to your head. There is something you will do. Heaven waka. Oh, he gave me chuku chuku waka again. Heaven waka. I said, for this boy, no. For this woman, no. The woman took the only food left for her son and gave it for the propagation of the gospel. The Bible said, all through the famine, there was no scarcity in her life. No scarcity. No scarcity in her life. You can't give to God and God will not put the supply on you. How many of you want to live a life of overflow? Bring up four fingers for me. Number one, what do you do? Believe the prophetic declarations. Number two, do what? Believe the prophet's anointing. Number three, do what? Increase your faith. Number four, do what? Increase your giving life. That's how to overflow. That's how to overflow. Rest your feet and stretch out your hand towards the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure you have been truly blessed. To share your praise report or prayer request, SMS Pastor Larry on the number showing on your screen. Or you can email us at larrymichelle123 at gmail.com. God bless you.